In this short video, we'll talk about the microRNAs. MicroRNAs are class of non-coding RNA that play important role in regulating gene expression. So the major function for microRNA are invo getting involved in the gene regulation network. So microRNAs are associated with development of an organ, let's say brain. It is involved in cancer. It is also involved in regulation of large gene networks. We'll talk about all of these in this video. So first let's see how microRNAs work. So there are dedicated genes in our genome for the microRNAs. So these genes doesn't encode a protein, but they encode a microRNA. So the first transcript that comes out of these kind of genes are known as primary microRNA transcript. And these primary microRNA transcript get further processed with the help of enzymes known as Drosha and uh, DGCR8 or Pasha. So the, the pre-microRNA transcript get further trimmed. Eventually, this particular pre-microRNA transcript would be moving out of the nucleus with the help of the exporting 5 complex as shown here. Once outside in the cytoplasm, it would be assembled with several other proteins known as dicer. And dicer further chops off this kind of loop structure at the end. And now, there are two strands of these microRNA which would eventually be associated with organot proteins and it will eventually form the risk complex or RNAi silencing complex. Only one strand of these microRNA would be loaded into the RNAi silencing complex. It binds to specific region of the mRNA and most of the cases it lead to degradation of the mRNA. This is how overall microRNA can work. But there are many uh, aspects to it, like the production of microRNA could be way more complicated that we have seen right now. So at a simplest level, there could be one microRNA from one particular microRNA gene. There could be also multiple microRNA or an array of microRNA coming out from one gene and later on they are getting processed. There could be also microRNA as a part of an intron in a protein coding gene. So all these possibilities are there in a live cell. Question is, where does microRNA binds? MicroRNA can possibly bind to different uh, untranslated regions. Most commonly, they prefer the three prime untranslated region. And some of the cases, though rare, they can also bind to the five prime untranslated region. But that's much less frequent. So how does microRNA regulate gene expression then? MicroRNA can regulate gene expression in two ways. First of all, it can downregulate the mRNA by degrading it. Just by associated with the RNAi silencing complex, it can chop off the mRNA and thereby less mRNA would be available to produce protein. So less product would be formed. There is also another way by which microRNA can work that is interfering with the uh, translation. Some of the cases, the microRNA and the risk complex sits in a 3' prime UTR, let's say, but does not cleave the mRNA. So it works like a roadblock for the ribosome or it interferes with the translation process. That is also possible. Now, let me tell you that microRNAs are uh, present in a tissue-specific and cell-specific manner. So let's say there are different cell types like epithelial cell, one microRNA might not be present in this cell but might be present in neuron and so might not be present in fibroblast again. So there could be specific microRNA which are very cell type specific but there could be also microRNA which are present in pretty much all the cell types. So depending on these function and availability, microRNA regulate the overall uh, gene regulatory networks in different cell types. So how does that happen? So imagine from a stem cell, we have uh, two alternate possibilities, one epithelial cell, one neuron. Now there are two master regulatory network here shown by master regulator one and two. So these master regulators are transcription factor. And these transcription, each of these transcription factor regulates one particular gene expression module. And each of these module actually suppress each other. That's why in the stem cell state, None of the fate is acquired. So one of the module has to dominate over the other module. This is how the uh, system is laid off. 
And here comes the microRNA. Imagine a microRNA, which is let's say microRNA X. This can suppress the master regulator network too. So as a result, the master regulator transcription factor would be produced less. The gene module too would be poorly regulated or downregulated. So now the repression of module two over module one would be uh, d uh, would be gone, and now module one would be the predominant gene expression module mediated by master regulator one. So it might lead to the fate towards an epithelial cell. So this is how we saw how one possible way by which my microRNA can regulate the cell fate choice. MicroRNA not only uh, is present in the cell but also present in secreted body fluids. For example, microRNAs can be found in cerebrospinal fluid. One example is microRNA 204 and it has been shown by scientists recently that microRNA 204 regulates the quiescence of uh, stem cells in the brain region. So it regulates the number of quiescent neuronal stem cells and that is super important for brain development. MicroRNAs are also implicated in the context of cancer. Small RNA sequencing from the tumor sam samples has identified there are several several microRNAs which gets upregulated in a cancer sample. How does they regulate proliferation or cell division kinetics is something to note in the future years. And But microRNAs are super important in context of many diseases including cancer. So let, let's ask that how one can study microRNA experimentally. So microRNA can be detected with the help of small RNA sequencing, but that's expensive. So if you have, you have to know about few microRNAs, let's say four or five microRNAs, quantitative real-time PCR could be another alternative and very sensitive. Also, fluorescence in situ hybridization can show you the intrinsic localization of a particular microRNA inside the cell. There are reporter assays as well. In this reporter assay, there would be a reporter gene like GFP. Underneath the reporter, the 3' UTR of a target mRNA would be provided. Anyway, this reporter would be eventually transcribed and translated to give rise to GFP. But imagine there is a microRNA which binds to the 3' UTR and degrades this particular, this particular mRNA. So in that context, less amount of GFP would be produced. So by looking at the GFP fluorescence, one can get an idea about the regulation of microRNA for this particular transcript. And this is how one can possibly study microRNA in the lab. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. You can get more notes, flashcards in my Facebook uh, page, also in Instagram. Please support our channel using super thanks. You can pay via PayPal, Paytm or UPI. See you in next video.